Hey everybody, Lonnie here. So today I want to answer one of my favorite questions that I've been asked uh, many times over the years working with time series databases and OSI soft pie systems is why can't I just use a SQL database instead of paying all this money for a Pi system? Can I just store this time series data in a SQL database? Legitimate question and I have some reasons why that would be a really bad idea. Stay tuned. Okay, so the scenario is, is I'm talking to a potential customer that's looking at figuring out how they're trying to store their time series data and they're looking at Pi and typically uh, OSI soft Pi systems uh, are pretty expensive. So that gives somebody pause as to why um, they should pay all this money for a Pi system. Um, I am not a Pi OSI soft salesperson or anything like that. Um, I just use the product. Uh, I've used the product for a lot of years and, um, and I think it's a really great solution for the right situation. It's not necessarily good for every situation, but it certainly um, is hard to beat if you're trying to do enterprise level storage of time series database uh, in a time series database today. Okay, so that said, uh, sometimes people that are not uh, familiar with Pi in any, in any shape or form or time series data storage in any shape or form, they will ask a simple question and it's a legitimate question as to why should why, why can't I just store my data in a, time, in a SQL database. Uh, SQL databases have been around for decades. They literally were, I mean, the first uh, commercially available database that everybody started using um, in my world. Um, I've used SQL databases for countless different purposes over the years. Uh, they're great. Um, they're very um, they're, they're very inexpensive, free in some cases, and, uh, and, and, and most people are familiar with them. So uh, time series data really uh, on the surface looks very simple, right? It's a timestamp and a value coming from a sensor. And the sensor is producing this data at some kind of a frequency, maybe every second, every 10 seconds, every minute, day, whatever. So can I just take that data and just put it in a table in a SQL database that has a, a few fields, you know, maybe for the timestamp, the value, and maybe you'd want to put the unit of measures or and a few other things, and then just uh, start feeding the data in and call it call it a day. I mean, what's the big deal? So, um, so there's a lot of things to consider around that, and I want to unpack that a little bit. So, um, yes, if you're doing a completely uh, trivial project where you, that's pretty much all you're going to need to do is you have a few sensors and you're going to collect some data and you're comfortable with that, then I would say go ahead, uh, use a SQL database. It probably will do the job just just, uh, just fine. But um, the real world, in most situations, that's not the case. Usually these are larger companies that have a lot of data, a lot of sensors, and people are trying to figure out, okay, how are we gonna, um, how, people are trying to figure out how are we going to go um, and, get, and, and get all this data into a database and then use it. So uh, you have to think about Step one, we need to connect to those sensors and we need to collect all this data. These sensors typically will speak a lot of different protocols uh, and, and that means that you're going to have to write some kind of an interface to, to speak that, the language of that sensor and then feed that into your database. So that's step one, that's gonna be um, some work. Uh, step two is you, know, you may have to do that three or four times because you have different sensors speaking different types of language and languages. So that can become challenging. Um, the size of this table is going to could become enormous over time. You're going to have a lot of different values coming in, and uh, and that's just going to get larger and larger, creating more and more rows. Now, um, that's not necessarily a problem if your data was always like coming in in order and everything was just fine. But you may be uh, starting to add more. Uh, data, more, more data streams, uh, sensors in the future. And then um, you also may have out of order data. You also could lose connectivity to your sensors. And then now, now you have missing data, you need to get that in. Um, and then maybe if you reconnect to your sensor, you wanna buffer that data and then bring that in. So there's all these different situations that can come up just around trying to collect that data and getting it into your database and then storing it in a way, in a very large table, uh, if you have to re-index this thing all the time, it's, it, it would be uh, it would be something I would not be comfortable with. Uh, what about uh, security? How are you going to secure the data? Um, are you going to have um, 
granularity around your security. So if you maybe you want to make some uh, sensor data available to certain groups, um, how are you going to handle that? That's something that you would have to figure out. Uh, the other thing is getting data out. So you have uh, SQL queries, which uh, the Pi system also has a SQL interface. If that's what you're comfortable with, that, that would still work. But uh, you know, now you're going to have to figure out, okay, after you get your data out, how is that all going to align and be ready to use in a consumable fashion? Pi has a lot of built-in methods of getting data out and built-in built-in functions. So things like, uh, simple things like interpolating data. So if you have uh, sensor data that was collected at weird times, or maybe you have missing some, some missing values here and there, um, the Pi system has the ability to kind of fill in that or create your time uh, in increments evenly. It's called interpolation. So if you want readings every minute, you can do that. You don't have to collect data from your sensor every minute. You could collect data every 10 seconds, but still get your data out every minute. That becomes a very valuable, um, um, very, very nice feature to have. And there's, 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 that's just one situation, but there's, 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 there's probably dozens of other situations of how you want to get your data out. And the Pi system has all of that already, and you would not have to go create these methods, these individual methods. Another thing is analytics. The Pi system has analytics built in, so you can do things like averages, sums, min, maxes. All these things are already there and available. You don't have to go do any extra work to figure that out. And it's very performant, so this will work at scale. This will work with, with large amounts of data. It'll be quick. Uh, you won't have to, um, you know, sweat it. The uh, the other thing that also the Pi system provides is a um, asset hierarchy structure, a model is what they call it, an asset framework. Uh, asset framework gives your gives you the ability to have context and group your values and your sensors like based on location or equipment, and 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 have a whole whole set of way of, of being able to navigate and access that and find uh, the proper values and, and points when you need to. It's a very very uh, powerful tool, and I have yet to see that in any other product actually. Though. Even time series databases, I haven't seen that, and that is that is um, for an advanced system that I can't. I can't imagine having to do that, uh, or actually I could because I've had to do it other ways, but that's that's a really, really nice tool. The final thing I wanna say, because I could probably go on um, for, for quite some time uh, with this is that, uh, is that you have to you have to think about OSI Soft is a single company. They have um, they have hundreds of developers working on this product continuously, trying to make it better. They have support. They have a, there's a whole ecosystem of partners that can provide different things. People building products around uh, the the core infrastructure uh, database. So if you if you go out and you need to hire somebody or you need to find a product, you have the best chance of finding that with a, uh, with a Pi system because it is so so commonly used. Versus if you try to do it yourself yourself or maybe use some very obscure solution. You're going to have to own that. You're going to have to maintain that. Uh, it's going to be difficult to find people to support that for you, especially if it becomes a very large system. This is why the Pi system pretty much uh, has the market for enterprise level data, uh, time series database historians. Um, some, util some, some industries like utility, I've heard numbers as high as 80 or 90% of adoption rate with the Pi system. So you have you have that working for you and that's something that you'll, you'll be able to take advantage of versus trying to go out and do it on your own. Um, so I think I'm gonna just summarize that um, at this point and just say, if you're, if you're at a point where you're really asking the question, should I use a SQL database or should I use a Pi system? And price is the thing that's giving you a pause around the Pi system really look at uh, what would it cost you to design an entire system on your own um, that would be equivalent. I highly doubt that you uh, that, that a company could afford to do that. They would have to spend a lot of money, uh, make a lot of decisions, have some seriously qualified people to be able to pull that off and be successful at it. So uh, if this is a if this is a production enterprise level system in that scenario, um, I would definitely recommend um, you know, investigating OSI soft Pi system, uh, finding out more about what it does if you don't have a good understanding of it. But uh, you know, if if you're if you're at a SQL Server or a Pi system type of question, then you're either um, you either have a very small 
uh, uh, problem that you could probably use a lot of different things for and Pi may be overkill. If that's the case, then I would say don't use Pi. But if it's, um, if it's for a larger system, then uh, you know, it would be hard for me to recommend uh, not going with Pi. Anyway, if um, hopefully this was a benefit to you. If you've ever gotten that question or you've ever asked that question, um, hey, I, I get it. I mean, we all are at a certain place in our learning and understanding of technology and it's and sometimes it's hard to understand. This is literally, you know, an apples to oranges question. So it's, it's not really a legit question. And if, 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 you're, if there's a little bit more education and understanding of what the product does and whether that product fits uh, what your needs are is really the first question. And then if the cost is a problem, then that's like another question altogether. But I certainly wouldn't say, you know, you're, you're going to save money by designing your own um, if it's going to be a, 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 a significantly large system. Okay. Thanks again uh, for watching. And um, I've got a bunch of other things that I want to talk about and videos coming up. So t stay tuned. My name is Lonnie. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.